Hey everyone, Malhar here from Before and After Tennis, and today we are going to discuss Daniil Medvedev's forehand. So whenever I talk to players about Medvedev's forehand, the words that often come up in conversation are weird, strange, odd, awkward. And yes, while he does have some peculiarities with how he hits the ball, it's not as if Daniil Medvedev lives in an entirely different universe with different physical laws. There are some things that he does really well from a stroke production point of view that players of all levels can really learn from and emulate. So today we're going to take a look at why Daniil Medvedev's forehand is better than you think it is. Before we get started, I want to give a thank you to Slow Mo Tennis for allowing me to use this footage here on the right. They are a fantastic channel if you love slow motion footage of the pros. Please check them out, the link will be in my description. Let's watch one together and then we'll break it down. If we're talking about one of the peculiarities that Medvedev has, he has basically what's a low high swing. If you watch his preparation, his racket head will actually go downwards a little bit and then it'll come high into this position here. So if we watch here from the side view, we can see that he's creating a low high swing. From a ready position, he's not turning first, he's just bringing the racket downwards. And what would the opposite of that be? It would be if he placed his racket head here in the ready position and just left the hands alone. I believe it's a phrase that comes from Dennis Vandermeer and just completed a unit turn. If he just turned this way, his racket head would essentially end up in the same place. So there are slight consequences to how Medvedev prepares, and we'll have to factor in now this view here on the right. Medvedev has a low high, and in general, his take back is pretty large. So we would see someone like a Dimitrov or a Federer, their racket head wouldn't go all the way up there, it would stay more on the hitting side and it would fall. But what is Medvedev known for? He's known for standing all the way back meters behind the baseline. And one of the reasons why is he has a low high on his forehand and he takes his racket back really high, which just means his swing is larger. That's why he stands so far back to hit the ball. So if you're swinging like this, is that something I'd recommend that you change? Well, if we're talking about Medvedev, he's been number one in the world. He's playing at the highest level in our sport. So the answer is no. But if you're a recreational player who's struggling for timing, who can't take the ball early, and you want to add that skill set into your game, then yes, that is definitely something I would recommend changing or addressing. Now that we have the peculiarities out of the way, we're going to move on to what Medvedev does exceptionally well. One of the first things is he creates separation. Separation is just the shoulders turning more than the hips. And you want to get into this position because you essentially want to unwind the segments of your body from the ground up into the contact. It's really important how fast that trunk is rotating when you make contact with the ball and we can also see on the left side here he's turned his left arm if there were baseline here he's turned his left arm to the baseline or a little bit more so i know the stances aren't equal but if you want to hit the ball really well you need to create separation between how much your shoulders turn compared to your hips i will give you a caveat often when i see players start to try and incorporate separation what they end up doing is they end up taking their racket head all the way here and their hand often comes a little further back as well. So I've made a video on why you don't want to prepare this way and I will link it somewhere up here. But in general, if you're swinging from up here, your swing won't match the shape of the court and also you're going to have timing issues. The next part I want to address is this idea that Medvedev doesn't get below the ball or that he hits the ball completely flat. And yes, it is true, he doesn't hit the ball with as many revolutions as someone like a Nadal or an Alcaraz or a Rude. If that's the incoming ball, you'll notice, let's see, we'll take it to where he contacts. 
you'll notice the racket head is approaching from below. And yes, on the left here is a higher contact point versus the one on the right here, where we can see he does definitely approach from below upwards. Yes, it is one of the flattest ground strokes we've seen, but the racket head still has to approach the ball slightly from below to get that ball over especially considering how far back he is in the court. He's probably two meters behind the baseline here on the left and maybe a meter and a half on the right. There is a caveat, of course, if you're all the way in the court, then that changes a little bit with how Medvedev could potentially swing at the forehand. But in general, you do need to get the racket head below the height of the ball. I believe this is attributed to Vic Braden, and it is the number one mistake that most players make is they don't get their racket head below the height of the ball enough. It's a lifting game and you need to be able to generate forward revolutions to be able to play this game well. Okay, so the next part I want to touch on is Medvedev's incredibly long hitting zone. What is a hitting zone? A hitting zone is just the amount of time that the strings face the target. If the ball will always go where the strings are facing, you want the strings facing the target for a long period of time so that your brain basically has less calculations to make to get the racket head into the right place. And let me show you what I mean here. So if we look at Medvedev on the left, look at his strings. They're facing the target as they start to approach the ball, contact, and then even after contact here, we can see that his strings are tracking outwards to the target. This is in working with so many players, one of the biggest misunderstandings that players have. They see the pros on the WTA and ATP Tour swinging really fast and they think that, oh, they are creating windshield wipers or they're folding their hands or rolling their hands over. But if you slow down to high frame rate and slow motion, you will see in general that the strings really track outwards to the target. And that's what I mean by it's not as if Medvedev lives in another universe. To play this game well, you need to factor in things like having a long hitting zone. And the idea is, well, look here, we have captured Medvedev just before he's about to contact the ball. But let's say he were a little bit off and he contacted the ball with his strings facing here, the way they are right now. The ball would still go roughly towards his intended target because look at where the strings are facing. They're facing towards the court. That's what it means to have a long hitting zone. And another way of thinking about it, I believe attributed to Vic Braden as well, is you want to have an insurance plan. You want those strings facing the target from here so that even if you contact here or here, the ball will still go roughly to your intended target. That's really the issue that I have with players who excessively roll their hand or try to create excessive windshield wiper motions. Again, with the caveats, because there are no absolutes, the hand will go outwards to the target. And yes, of course it'll fold over, but this is the really important part. This is where the magic happens. What the racket face is doing before the contact and then after the contact. And then yes, you will create that finish across the body. Okay, and lastly, we will just touch on this idea of using ground reaction force to basically move your racket faster. So you often hear stay down, but I just want to show you as you push against the ground, power comes from the ground up, you will start to unwind the segments and the natural reaction will be to lift. Yes, there are times when you absolutely do stay down, but it's not a blanket statement. In general, if you want to move the racket head really fast, as the segments unwind into the contact and you're trying to get that racket head to move really fast, common thing that all players do is that they lift. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching. If you want to work with me, my information is in the description below. And there's also a free email series in there, Five Myths and Misconceptions in Tennis. Yes, it is a lead magnet. I will ask for your email, but I promise I won't be spamming you every day after the series is finished about courses, events, etc., etc. Thanks so much for watching and being here, and I hope to see you all soon.